Now let us see the frequency count method to find the time and space complexity. So this is called as the frequency count method. That means an algorithm is there for all the steps for the algorithm is written here and you are counting what number of times that particular step get executed. Finally, you have to add up those values. When you add up, you will arrive at a polynomial function and from that polynomial function, you have to take the higher order exponents to come out with the time complexity of the algorithm or the space complexity also. I am showing here with three examples that you can see various values for the running times of algorithms. Here there is one algorithm which is swapping two numbers. So basically I am uh, using here a function a and b are the two numbers that are there as input. So what logic you are using? Everyone knows that you can use the temporary variable in order to swap the numbers. So this is the logic that is used here to swap the numbers. Now there are three important statements and remember when you are writing when you want to count the number of times a statement gets executed, there are certain rules also. You should not include the time taken for the comment and declaration. Okay. And for all the assignment types of statements and initialization type of statements, the number of times the instruction gets executed is only one unit of time. Now all these three are assignment statements. So it will get executed only one unit of time. So here it takes only one unit of time. Here it takes only one unit of time. So there are three, you add these three, one plus one plus one, you will get three. So whatever is the number here, whether it is three, five, seven, ultimately you are going to write it as one. One and you are writing order of one. So order of one, one means what? Constant here. Constant in a sense, it indicates that for any value of input, okay, whatever may be the your input values, it is taking the same amount of time to complete its execution. So this is one and moreover how to calculate the space complexity for the same. This algorithm you have to just check which are the variables that are used here. So all normal variables we assume it is taking one word in the memory. So the running time complexity or the time complexity of this number is order of one. What about the space complexity? The procedure is just check in the algorithm how many variables are used. All these in this case are simple variables a, b and temp. So these simple variables will take only one word in the memory. 1, 1, 1. So if you are getting how much? 1 plus 1 plus 1, 3. So once again, if any number you have to reduce it to 1, which indicates constant. So the space complexity of this algorithm is also order of 1. It is mainly that we worry about the time complexity of an algorithm. We assume that we our systems are now having sufficient space to store any number of steps that are written for an algorithm. The problem arises only when we have a very huge data, otherwise we don't have to worry much about the space. Next, this is the second example which I am showing. This is simply calculating what the sum of the numbers that are there in the array. Suppose if I am giving some four numbers, so it will add all these numbers and try to give you the total value. So for this, there is one statement assignment, so I can write it is taking one unit of time. Then now comes a for loop. For loop itself is having three statements. Okay, and how much time each of these statements will take? So the next comes the for statement. This is a loop which itself is having three statements again. So the initialization statement, this will get executed only one time, whereas increment statement will get executed n times. What about this comparison statement? It gets com executed n plus one times. For n times, the condition becomes true and definitely this internal state the inside statement will get executed but when it compares for the n plus 1 time then the condition becomes false that's why this statement will get executed n plus 1. So you have to add up actually all these three 1 plus n plus n plus 1 or you can take the maximum in this because even if you add up later you are going to ignore all the lower order exponents. So just we will take the highest here highest is n plus 1 so I can write here n plus 1. So just check here, the first statement is 1, second one is n plus 1. Now comes what? Inside this for loop, this inside statement will get executed n number of times. Then outside the loop is simply one return statement, which is what? It getting executed only one unit of, which takes only one unit of time. So when you add up here, 1 plus n plus 1 plus n plus 1. So add up all these values. How much you are getting? 2n plus 3. 
this is the polynomial function which you got then you have to ignore the constants and also you should ignore the coefficient of the higher order term here the higher order exponent is 2n okay first you ignore constant remaining will be 2n in that you have to ignore the coefficient of this higher order term so only n will be remaining so your sine complexity for this algorithm is order of n okay so this is one example let me take one more example because just here we have only one for loop let us see what if there is one more for loop within the other for loop so for that i have taken this example adding the two matrices so to add up to add up the values of two matrix two matrices a and b so here a and b okay then you have how many number of elements are there suppose if the matrix order is n by n let that means 3 by 3 3 by 3 You are going. You are going to give three, three by three. Totally nine elements in matrix A, nine elements in matrix B, and you will add up and store it in the uh, resultant matrix C. So once again here, even though some assignment statements may be there for this, all those statements finally it will get excluded when we try to follow the rule in order to extract the running time. So we just take the main statements that are there in the program. First, this one i equal to zero. This will get executed one time. I less than n, n plus one, I plus plus n times. Now look here. This loop, this is the for loop. Okay. This for loop is also having three statements. So this for loop three statements. This also will get executed one time. This will get executed n plus one, and this will get executed n. Fine. And when you have to pick here from all these three, the first for loop, the highest value is n plus one. So this one we will do. And in the second and for loop, once again the highest value is n plus one only. But this loop is within this outer for loop. So n number of times this inner for loop statements will get executed. So that's why you have to write now n into n plus one. Okay, n plus one you got from this for loop statements. Since this loop is within this loop, and it will get executed n number of times as we have already seen here. any statement which is written within the loop if this is n that many times the innermost statement will get executed same way here this is the innermost statement within the innermost for loop so this statement will get executed how many number of times n times n for this but this statement is also applicable for the outer for loop so n into n Hope you are following. This is the innermost statement, fine, which is inside this inner for loop. The inner for loop is the inside statement for the outer for loop. So this statement naturally will be what applicable to the inner for loop as well as the outer for loop. So it is getting executed n into n times n for one for loop and n for the other for loop. So you have to write down n square. Now first, uh, once you write this, you add up these values. You will get n plus one from the first one. Then here, how much you are getting? N square plus one from the second statement. From the third statement, you are getting n into n n square. So this n plus one I have written here. Now I am adding up n into n plus one. So I can write n into n is n square plus n. Okay, n square plus one. N into n plus one. So it will be n square plus n. Then you have from the third statement n square. So when you add up all these three, how much you will get? Two n square plus two n, okay, plus one. Two n square plus two n plus one. So just see, this is the polynomial function you got here for this algorithm. What is the rule says? You have to ignore all the lower order exponents. First, ignore the constants. Ignore the lower order exponents. Only pick the higher order exponent here. Higher order is two n square, and in that higher order, you have to ignore the coefficient. So the remaining thing is what n square. If it is n square, then what is that you have to write down? The runtime complexity of this algorithm is. I'll write it here only. T of n equal to order of n square. So just see here, I have taken intentionally these three different algorithms. Wherein you can see the different running times also depends on the statements that are there in the algorithm. For the second one also, you can calculate the space complexity. How do you calculate? 
you just check what are the variables that are used one is the array when when it is an array it is not a simple variable so it will take how many number of elements you are giving n words it will take then apart from that you have one more variable n which will take only one word then you have i j s all this will take one word one word one word add n plus 4 ignore the constant you will get only order of n so the space complexity of this second algorithm is order of n time complexity of this second algorithm is also order of n here in the third algorithm time complexity is order of n square presently we are only telling order o later we will see whether we have to write big o omega or theta all those things will come in my future sessions so how to calculate the space complexity of this now look here these two a and b are not single dimensional array they are two dimension these are two dimensional arrays so a will take n square words b will take n square then you have what uh, i 1 j j j is also a simple variable it will take one word n simple variable you will take one word so you will get 2 n square plus 3 then ignore the constants ignore the coefficient the space complexity is order of n square algorithm just check for the first algorithm we got running time as order of 1 that is a constant where it stands here in the order of growth is the very first one Okay, that can be the minimum value an algorithm can have as its running time. Then for the second algorithm, you got order of n as the time complexity. Where it stands, it is here. Fine. Then for the third algorithm, you got the running time of this algorithm as order of n square, or the time complexity of this algorithm as order of n square. N square is here. So n square is higher than n. N is higher than one. so these three algorithms i have taken as demo programs to just tell you how to find out the time complexity and the space complexity of the algorithm now here for each of the statements we are trying to write number of times that particular statements get executed we add up and take the higher order exponents from the polynomial function but the author has given just one statement for this he says that just see the basic operation okay whichever is the basic operation in the algorithm you count that particular step how many times it is executed you take only the count of the basic operation that itself becomes the running time of the algorithm so we will see that whether that particular statement is applicable here we have done for every statement but what the author has mentioned in that textbook is just count the number of times the basic operation of an algorithm gets executed the basic operation is one that is contributing maximum to the running time of an algorithm this statement is always the innermost statement in a loop in this case first we are not having any loop all these three are simple statements so even if you add some more statements also uh, for the first one it is not going to affect the running time will be order of constant only when you take the second this is the innermost statement and you just see what is that we gave earlier n and what is the time complexity we got yeah yes definitely this is applicable basic operation is this one whatever number of times it gets executed becomes the running time of that algorithm becomes the time complexity of the algorithm similarly you take the third algorithm the innermost statement is this one this is called as the basic operation this is getting executed n into n n square and if you see what time complexity we got n square so definitely this is quite easy also just see which is the basic operation check the number of times it is getting executed and that way you can find out the running time of an algorithm and once you get the running time of you play you just check where it comes in the order of growth and these are the rules that are to be followed already i told you comments and declaration you are going to give the count as zero only here you will not include there are any return and assignment statements you have to take the count as one and lower order and higher order if both are present lower order you ignore and one more step also if constants are present in the polynomial function then you ignore then when you pick the higher order exponent 
and in that whatever is the con uh, coefficient suppose if after picking you got you get 4n square the coefficient is 4 even this coefficient has to be what ignored so you have to take finally this one that becomes the running time of an algorithm so all this running time of an algorithm matters a lot when it is used in real time applications in war and all whenever they want to operate the missile even one fraction of second if it gets delayed then there will be a disaster basically an algorithm can be written by using different approaches so you have to see whether this approach is giving the highest running time or lowest running time or average running time suppose for example if you take traveling salesman problem you can carry out using the brute force approach you can also carry out using the dynamic programming there you just see that which is what is the running time of uh, this particular algorithm when you are using a different approach so that is what is the complete subject here the different approaches that are used here in order to design algorithms